Okay. Now we're rolling, rolling, rolling. I'm supposed to do the song reference. I can do them too. Fine. Next. <laughs> okay, next. <laughs> Another song reference? Sure, we can keep doing this. Ready? What else can we do? Uh, I have a obscure song reference. Do you? Yeah. Let me let me hear it. Walk across the garden in the footsteps of my shadow. See the lights out, no one's home. In amongst the statues, stare at nothing in the garden moves. Can you help me? I, I, I'll try. Okay. Because, it, like, like I said, it is kind of obscure. What song is that? It's Three Imaginary Boys. That's right. <laughs> Which is kind of fitting, at least parts of the song. Yeah, that is true. Let's skip over a few lines here. Deep inside the empty feeling, all the nighttime leaves me. Three imaginary boys. I think we have sufficiently tested the sound quality. Yep. Um, I think we can get this party started. I... Get it started in here. <laughs> All right. Welcome to yet another episode of We'll, we'll figure, figure It Out. So, today's episode of We'll Figure It Out, uh, we actually, I think this is probably the first episode that we figured this part out already. Before even starting it, we're calling this one Nest. Half empty or half full? That's a very good um, episode title. Yes. Typically, we run through the entire episode and then we, you know, find some kind of highlight from the episode and figure out what we're going to name it. Uh, this one is, you know, going to be primarily me um with some interjection from d which is going to be the opposite of what usually happens yeah it's it's kind of strange to have you driving this this horse i know you know <laughs> especially considering you know me and being center of attention and stuff like that it's not my thing <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know uh public speaking yeah you want to see somebody turn bright red that's me yeah yeah, you know, sweats the whole nine yards. Well, why don't we give the audience that may be joining us for the first time a little background of who we are? Okay. So you I start. am okay. <laughs> I'll I will start. Uh, I am D. I am Jeremy. We have been married for about four years almost now, and I have three bi biological children. I have three biological children. They are all boys. And none of them are imaginary. <laughs> no, they are not. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we talk on our podcast about different things we need to figure out in life. We talk about adulting, parenting, finances, home projects, and just pretty much whatever's going on in our life that week. So, recently in our life, we have had one of our little birds fly away and decide to um live his life as as an, a fully grown adult boy <laughs> <laughs> he's a real boy now yep. <laughs> so i'm gonna pass the mic so to speak figuratively because we have two mics and let jeremy kind of talk about his experience of being pretty much a biological ch child empty nester. Yep. So, for the record, we really don't have two mics. We have two microphones, but not two Michaels. So, you know, <laughs> had to take it and oh run with it. God. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been awkward. <laughs> we both had kids named Mike. That would have been... <clears throat> Yeah. We have no crossover on names at all. Nope. Not even middle names. Mm, nope. <laughs> <laughs> no, we do not. 
We have some pretty, um, I have some pretty uncommon (laughs) names, I guess. Yeah. Yep. Yep, you ha- you your your children's names aren't that common either. No, not not super <gasps> common. No. Hold one moment, please. Spudley, learn how to open the door or go away. Okay, so we we were just discussing name commonality. Yeah, and that we don't have any names that cross over, and we have some uncommon. I guess some of our names are common, but we just didn't happen to pick any of the same ones. No, we sure didn't. Uh, as as we've discussed previously in previous podcasts like i said we have six children between us from oldest to youngest we have colin evan samuel jonathan jordan noah did i miss anybody nope okay (laughs) that was all of them in the correct order at that (laughs) So this this discussion is about empty nesting. So we're half empty or half full. So for me, biological children for me, I am pretty much empty nested on. Mm-hmm. And it happened in reverse order. Yeah. Um, so Jordan, who is currently 15, uh, is 12 years old when his mom moved up to Kentucky. Uh, So he went to live with her the majority of the time in Kentucky. We would get him for holidays and summer. Correct. Uh, With the exception of this year, Jordan decided he wanted to stay up there for the summer. So he was 14 when he made the decision to go, you know, stay up there for the summer. It's not something that I was happy with, but I understood we had kind of talked about that that was imminent right. anyway. You know, it, it was only a matter of time, you know. So we had two good years where he, you know, was here for the summer. And, well, this year, you know, I get it. He has a life. Yeah. He's there, a teenager. So. He's in high school. He has a social life. And he doesn't want to spend all of his summer away from his friends. I mean, I I get that. I mean, that's, yeah. you know. <clears throat> and the fact that they were moving, you know, kind of prevented him from coming down for any length of time. Right. So. so. So, Jordan was the first one to go. Oh, but he did surprise us. Yes, he did. He, he showed up at the end of June for mm-hmm. a few days. Yeah. Uh, because his sister came in town, so. We were very thankful. Yes. I was so I, surprised. <laughs> I was appreciative of it. And, you For know, sure. Wanted to make sure that that visit was going to be a good one. And it was. Yeah. I thought it was. Yeah. So Evan, at the age of 18, made the decision to live full time at his mom's house. So he wasn't coming back and forth here. Prior to that, you know, from the time he was about 15 Mm -hmm. he had switched schools to the one in in katie's district yeah so he spent less time with me as it was because of that so i'd have him on the weekends or whatever he'd come over and uh, he was driving so he popped in whenever he was in the neighborhood and you know stuff like that so but he didn't really sleep over for a couple of years a whole lot no he he's he I think the first summer we were in this house, he was here a good bit. True. I, memory is terrible, but, but yeah. Um, he he was happy when we moved into this house because we, mm-hmm. were, we were moved from the old house, which had a lot of negative attached for him. Yeah. So, uh, in 2019, he he had actually decided to live here full-time for a little bit he did that for maybe a week yeah and i think honestly i think the the chaos that happens in the house was kind of pushing him a little bit so he understandably opted to move and stay at his mom's house it's just really noisy when you have multiple children and and in and of itself 
and then there was a particular child of mine that was going through a really rough period and so <clears throat> it kind of um added to the chaos that was here which you know i i totally understand you know evan's position on that um there are some days i wish i could move out <laughs> and not deal with it I, I I don't say that out loud, but you know, <laughs> so, there are some times when it's like, you do know, we really have to do this today? <laughs> right. Evan will be turning twenty next month. Wow. Yes, I know. I know. Wow, right? I know. And hold on, I'm making noise. Oh, that's her pouring water, not peeing in the room. I almost overfilled it <laughs> Jesus. Oh. hope you wouldn't think i was peeing in the room well you know <laughs> desperate times desperate measures mm -mm. You know, we are we are doing podcast number two of the night during domestic social distancing <laughs> which was the previous episode and you should go listen to it if you haven't yep uh it's a short one so <laughs> back to what we were talking about yeah um no he'll be 20 yeah he'll be 20 he'll yeah. be 20 this year and colin who has been living full-time with me since he came back from college he went for one semester no two semesters in 2015 and 2016 and when he came back down from college he opted to stay with me so colin has been full-time with me 100 percent so that's five years. Yeah. He came back from college the year that we met. Yeah. Okay. Well, right before. Right before. Okay. Yeah, because he came back in May of 2016. Okay. Yep, yeah, May. Then it would have been a year later, so that was six years. Is it? No, 2016. He came back 2016. He graduated 2015 from high school. Okay. May. Okay. Yeah. So and that's we, we met in 17. 17. Okay. So he. Okay. So he came back a year before we met. Mm -hmm. it, for some reason, I had in my head that we've known each other for five years. <laughs> Sometimes it feels like 10 and 15. It does. Not because it's been a long drawn out, but we fit a lot in the last four years. Yeah. So anyway, so he moved out this year at the ripe old age of 24. It was not something that was pushed upon him that he needed to. You know, we did let him know that, you know, hey, when you hit 25, you know, the rent goes up. <laughs> <laughs> no, didn't the rent go up every year after 22? Like, mm. I thought we increased it every year. Mm -mm. No, he, he increased it when we needed the extra bandwidth for internet so he threw the extra fifty dollars a month at us right but right right because anyway. <laughs> he was downloading very massive games and we were going over our data plan yeah yeah for internet mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he's like oh it's fifty dollars extra for unlimited here <laughs> so yeah he moved out at the age of 24 so like i say i've been i on my end of things have been empty nested in reverse. Uh, so it's kind of, it's kind of weird because each one of the occurrences has had different emotional effects <coughs> on me. Um, but Colin being the last one to leave. Uh Oh, hold on. Hold on. Interruption. Number one. Where was I? You were at something about Colin. Okay, yeah. Colin being the... Oldest. Oldest and last to leave. So that's the, the last one of my birds to fly. Mm-hmm. Uh, has been taxing. Lots of different emotions that go along with it. I'll get into those in a minute. But going into the reasoning why this podcast is called half empty or half full so my half has flown the nest the other half still lives not. here yep 
So for me, the nest on my end, like I say, is, is, is empty for my biological, but that doesn't mean that my nest is empty. Right. Uh, it's still full to a different degree. Mm-hmm. And my nest, I think emotionally for me, is going to wind up when these children start leaving the nest is going to have more of an impact on me than my children leaving had on D because of time and familiarity. I, I have to say, though, that Colin leaving the nest definitely was a mix of emotions for me as well. I mean, Colin and I are the closest of me and your, your children. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've spent the most time together because he's lived here 100% of the time. And mm -hmm. um, I work from home. So when he would get home from work, sometimes we'd have conversations and he'd ask my advice on things. And I feel like, you know, I've played a hand in him being prepared to take this step because when we met, we had started talking to him about planning for the future, you know, getting a savings account. I, you know, I remember talking to him about 401ks and starting his 401k and, you know, eventually you're going to want to move out and you want to start, you know, saving for your down payment now. And, you know, just kind of gave him all of the, I wish I would have when I was your age. Mm -hmm. And he like really took all of that advice and put it into practice. And he made himself a very nice little nest egg for when he was ready to move out. That he did. So I feel like, you know, of all of your children, I have parented him mm -hmm. the most and had a right. relationship with him the most. So... I love both, you know, all three of your children, the other two, you know, as well. And, um, you know, Evan has been in and out for most of our relationship and marriage that, you know. It, there, there wasn't much opportunity or as much opportunity to make connection or. It's or, a different or, connection. It's a different connection. There is connection there. There is love. There's caring. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have the, as many opportunities to to step parent him. I right. Guess. Or, yeah. Or, yeah. Or give guidance. Yeah. Right. And he was pretty much like he's kind of a very independent child. So. And he likes to do things his own way. So I don't think he asks for much advice from even his natural parents. I don't know about Katie. <laughs> Yeah, well, her and I had a discussion about some of that stuff the other day, too, you know. Yeah, <laughs> so. you know, so I don't know how much, you know, he goes to Katie for advice, you know, but when it comes to Jeremy and I, he doesn't really, you know, depend on us for life advice much. He talks to you about cars a lot, but that's yeah. what I, you know, but I mean, I know that if he was ever in a pickle he'd come to us, you know, he has come to us about some things, mm -hmm. you know, so, um, and, and I know that he knows that I love him and support him in any way. Like, I know that's there, right? Like, right. And that's kind of always been there. And it's, it's kind of weird because there was some tension between him and Jeremy when we met. And, um, but it, it was never directed at me or about me. So it was kind of a odd situation. Yeah. It, it was a matter of impacts on him from previous life, life choices and him disagreeing with what my choices at that point in time were not knowing what the situation may have been. Yeah. If that makes sense. Well, he was just going off of past experience and, right. and he was fearful of history repeat. repeating itself, which once he got to know me, he realized <clears> that <throat> that wasn't the case, yeah. which I knew. And we both knew that that was going to take time. So, yeah. So, which kind of leads into what the emotional differences of parenting in contrast to step parenting is, mm -hmm. you know, um, and like I was saying, I think when it comes time for 
these children to leave the nest, it's going to be more of an impact on me than when my children leave the nest on D because I'll have more time of familiar familiarity and relationship relationship and I can't even necessarily say even child rearing because of you know how we deal with that is I'm not so much a a figure in making the decisions as much as I am in support of you know what happens with her kids Right. We do have a whole podcast kind of describing the way we've blended our families, the differences on parenting and step parenting. So if you want to kind of get, you know, the gist behind Mm -hmm. how we balance that out and the discussions we've had around it, you can go ahead. I'll leave a link in the description for our blended families podcast. Right. So like for, for D it's a matter of, it's only been, Four, and it's, it, I'm not downplaying the time, but no, no, it's yeah. only been four years, you know, that she's had an opportunity to be in, in my kids' lives uh, where it's going to be, let's see, six years before Samuel turns Sam 18. turns 18, mm-hmm. seven years before Jonathan, mm-hmm. and it's going to be 12 years when he turns 18 yeah yeah so by the time noah turns 18 Mm -hmm. and that doesn't necessarily mean when noah's out of the house but right just to to kind of put in perspective of you know the time that i've had right yeah you know so i'll have i'll have had three times as much time Mm -hmm. with all of the children right with noah with noah specifically yeah about twice the time with the other two correct yeah so you know by then the bonds will have been made a a little bit more yeah concrete plus the fact that they live with us full time they're 100 Mm -hmm. percent of the time with us that that also plays into it as well so you know it's it's for me at that point it's going to be a little bit harder but it's still not going to be the same as what d is going to be feeling at that point in time oh my gosh i can't even imagine the feelings i'm going to have when my little noah leaves the nest but you know we don't know what order they're going to leave in either so <laughs> yeah who knows i mean i might leave first no i doubt I, I, if you leave oh, no. first we're having some serious issues <laughs> I, can, I can guarantee you i know who will probably be leaving first I wasn't going to name names, but I can about guarantee you who will be leaving first. (laughs) Well, we know who wants to leave first, that's for sure. But, you know, wanting to and actually putting that into practice are two different things. Yeah. So, you know, and all of our children have the opportunity to live with us until they feel that they are ready to adult. So, um, you know, we kind of made a cutoff for for Colin of 25 just because we felt like if we didn't he'd never leave (laughs) and I don't think honestly I don't think that would have been the case but I think it was something that kind of maybe was a a motivator for him in a way Well, it gave him a it gave him like a a set like time frame to get prepared like you know not like we would be say okay well you're 25 go find your place to live goodbye you know but it's like, you know, let's try and make that a goal to, to get out on your own by the time you're 25. So it wasn't a set in stone thing. I mean, if he needed more time because he couldn't find a place, we would have totally given him more time. So it's not like he was a burden on us at all. He was very yeah. helpful and he was, you know, he did a lot for us. So mm-hmm. we definitely did not mind him living here. I just needed my office. <laughs> But that's not the reason I wanted him out. But the <laughs> office comes at what cost for me. <laughs> I think it's going to come at the cost of our other children. Because they're going to have to step into his shoes. I already have shoes. Like, you do? <laughs> you don't need your shoes, <clears throat> Goofy. <laughs> so, anyway, kind of back on topic-ish here. Topic-ish? Yeah. <laughs> you know... 
so okay i think we've pretty much touched on the three points for the most part that i've got for the emotional yeah. difference yeah also something different about this one besides the fact that i was taking the lead on it and besides <laughs> besides all the other little differences um this is the first one that we actually have i think uh, a full outline written out for points to touch on yeah no this will be the second one yeah that's true because we did another one with i can't remember which one we we did but i don't think they were as in depth Mm -mm. no they were not as organized as your notes honey you did uh, good i wasn't knocking your notes but you knocked them <laughs> yourself just now. yes noah pause we can pause all right so um uninterruption <clears throat> interruption undone all right so my next points of interest here are and there's more to it than what i've got down here listed but i at the time that i wrote this out i couldn't yeah you just needed a guide to right. guide you on how how you wanted to talk about this not the absolute like end all be all of what you wanted to say yeah. right so basically what emotions did I experience or have I been experiencing? And I currently do still experience because it's still pretty fresh. I mean, it's been two weeks since he's not slept here. A, a week, a week and a half. -ish. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Well, we got, we got his bed up there last Sunday and he'd been sleeping on his couch the for a couple, couple of nights, nights prior to so that. So it's, oh, I mean, barely over a week. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Again, it feels like it's been so much longer, but right. yeah. So, okay. So, emotions that I've been feeling. Sadness, which is kind of on a selfish end of things because it's a sadness on my part, not a sadness because something has happened bad. Mm -hmm. uh, but that, I think, stem is stemming from the fact that I'm no longer primary pillar of support for the kids. You know, yeah. for their health and well-being or their housing you know and it it plays on one of my traits that maybe one day we're going to have to do a podcast on codependency uh, yeah definitely but that's just it's it's an inherent trait that i have i got it from my mom watching her i learned from her it's her fault no <laughs> <laughs> what can we blame on our parents next so, podcast <laughs> uh, and you know it, it's always been an issue of mine um, of being codependent and I know that it has affected me and people I might be in a relationship with or whatever and my kids because I've always been that codependent person. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think that's, that's, it's really been tugging on that, that, that portion of me, that sadness, that knowing that, you know, I am no longer, well, needed is what it feels, you know? Right. And, and I, I get that to a certain extent, you're not needed in, in certain areas of their lives, right? So it's almost like, you're grieving a loss, which I think is normal for mm -hmm. empty nesters. It's kind of like, the, it's not necessarily a loss, but it's such a drastic change in your dynamic of your life yeah. that you're, the sadness is a grief. Let's see. Which follows up to the next point, empty. Mm -hmm. A feeling of emptiness. Regardless of how old they were, what you know, whatever point in life they were. Yeah. The leaving, it, it creates a void. Yeah. You know, it, you know, during the times that, you know, there was the split custody or joint custody, however you want to refer to it as, mm -hmm. where it's a 50-50, mm -hmm. you know, the nights that my kids weren't with me <clears throat> were, honestly, it was tough on me. But I always knew they'd be back. Yeah. 
Right. You, you had know? that hope of right. knowing that on specific days they would be back. Right. So whether yeah. or not we had anything planned or, you know, we did any real activities or anything like that, the nights that they were there is all that mattered, is that mm-hmm. they were there. Mm-hmm. You know, hearing them argue over whatever or, <laughs> you know, the pitter-patter of little feet was always, you know, Jordan was always running around. Yeah. Uh <laughs> when Evan was much, much younger, he was always, you know, energetic and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, but just being able to hear them in the background yeah. and, and know that they're there. The fullness of the noise of a house that's right. full, you know, you know that, which yeah. Is, which is where I've always had the, the – okay, so my, my wireless network for many years has been – Central chaos, not spelled like you would think. And this is why. It's because it was... The the chaos was a part of me. It, yeah. It, it was something that I It was almost like enjoyed. a comfort, and it brought you joy to have the chaos around you. Right. And chaos just being, you know, noise and children, right? Like right. Not, yeah. Not necessarily that there's always something crazy going on, right. but, you know... <laughs> So there's that. Uh, happiness. Yeah. That, you know, knowing that my child has reached a stage where they can sustain. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and being a part of that. Being a part of what made them be able to do that. Yeah. You know, even though, okay, Jordan empty nesting is not him going out on his own. Right. But it's it's kind of him making his decisions. Yeah, he's he's making choices you know, for himself, you know, as a young right. adult. No, oh, and whether or not they're the same things that I would have chosen, mm-hmm. you know, I respect his decisions and I understand them. Mm-hmm. But I also know that they're not necessarily bad decisions right exactly you know so i'm I'm happy with that i'm proud with that mm-hmm. you know when it came to colin leaving i got to witness firsthand what his decisions were going to be yeah you, you got know, to play a part his, in all of it yeah what his choices were yeah and even though i might have had an opinion or I may mm-hmm. have given him whatever advice, he was able to formulate what he needed to formulate to move forward in the direction he needed to go. Mm-hmm. You know, would they necessarily have been the choices that I would have made? No. But they're not my choices. Right, and he's a completely different person than you are. So, you know, in a nutshell, I mean, I would say that he made some really great choices. He did. For him, for his, his personality, his, you know, um, where he wants to go in life and his abilities, I guess, you know, mm-hmm. like he made a really good decision based on what he's capable of. Or, or would be willing to. To manage. To manage. Yeah. You know, and and for him, that was a that was a good decision. Yeah, and for like sure. I said, it's not something that I would have chosen, but you know, yeah, I'm a different person. Right. You know, I wouldn't expect Colin to be like me. Right. <laughs> no. The same. What's that? Nobody's the same. That's correct. And you know, a different choice is not always a wrong choice or a bad choice. It's just different. And you know, that's where I think we as parents we line up a lot on is we understand that each of our children are different and all of their choices are going to be different Mm -hmm. and we we don't try to fit our children into any boxes because absolutely none of our children fit into a typical box (laughs) none of them (laughs) not a single one square pegs round holes You might. (laughs) Noah might be the only (laughs) typical child. I mean, that would be difficult. He probably could. It would be difficult, but he probably could. (laughs) 
it in a box. <laughs> All right. So, so the last thing I have listed here, and I, I don't know if anybody else can classify this as an emotion. I do because there's, there's feelings that are attached to it that I can't exactly explain, but I'm calling it reflection. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this wasn't noticeable during the Jordan or Evan transitions because Jordan had half of his stuff here. Yeah. Evan only had a portion of his stuff here. Mm-hmm. So it's not like I had to help them moving out. Yeah. Per se. Yeah. You know, there wasn't a lot of things that were, you know, packed up and moved and unpacked and seen. Mm-hmm. And so with, with Colin, helping him move and him packing things and unpacking things while we were going through some of those things at his new place. Brought back memories. So you were remembering. So. And kind of. Right. So yeah. memories of things. And we discussed this a few nights ago when I was talking about, you know, I helped him hang up his guitars and stuff. Yeah. And, you know, hanging up his bass. He was 13 years old when he got it. And I remember what I was going through, what we were going through as a family, what That's struggles awesome. and what kind of things were connected to that and then there were other items he had pictures from his sixth birthday party Mm -hmm. you know and i i talked to him about it too later on when i went over there and helped him with some more stuff yeah you know and just said you know it's like it it's you know it brings back all the emotions and memories from those times Mm -hmm. and you reflect on that not just from self but where he was at that point in time and memories of how he was and all Mm -hmm. the interactions and you know seeing how much he's grown up since then and it's a positive thing yeah even though thinking about certain times may have been bad times or tough times Mm -hmm. where are we now right we're through them yeah right yeah okay and he's a stronger or better person he may be damaged but which i feel bad about but nobody leaves their childhood undamaged honey so but that's there there is so much more involved yeah but these i think are the core core things that i have felt and am feeling when it comes to it yeah and, you know, I, I guess if you would, you know, flip the script over to me, the um, I can relate to the sadness a little bit of mm-hmm. him leaving and moving on. And um, but I don't have the empty feeling since I still have my bio children here. So that emptiness isn't there for me. So there's right. a difference in how that plays a part on what's going on you know you opposed to me opposed to you you know we both have the happiness that he's you know all of your children are doing well you know mm-hmm. um in their current situations and you know i don't have all of the memories i only have the last four plus a few months of memories with him so i don't really have that reflection same you know right emotions that go through remembering you know different things um because honestly a a lot of our memories with you know mostly you know well a lot of our memories with most of your children and all of most of the memories we have um are pretty positive you know we haven't really had any super negative things i mean we've had some struggles Mm -hmm. you know and we've had you know bumps in the road and stuff like that but at the core of it a lot of our memories are very good memories so it's it's definitely a little more nostalgic i would say for me but i don't have items that are attached to those really a whole lot because we haven't exchanged a lot of them you know (laughs) right (laughs) 
and, and the thing is, is that the value of it is not necessarily because of the items, but it does. It's just sparking memories of sure. of certain times. It's not memories that I wouldn't have without the items. Right, right. But, but it's, it's just... th- those items when you see them bring up the mm-hmm. memories, and that's that's kind of what I was saying. I don't yeah. have as many items that bring up memories for us. As, as you obviously you do since you've been part of their lives for so much longer. So that's yeah, maybe a little bit longer. A little bit. <laughs> I mean, I, I've got a full twenty years on Colin on you. You do. <laughs> you, do. <laughs> you know. Um, you know, it would have. You know, and and sometimes I feel like you know we missed out on some really core like childhood developed relationship because of how late in life I came in to this family, you mm-hmm. know, but, um, you know, I try to focus on, you know, the fact that we did have time together and they, we do have good memories together. So yep. interruption number, I don't know, two or three. three. So I guess that's where the half empty half full really comes in is because you're pretty much feeling half empty and I'm feeling half full. Or maybe three quarters full. Three quarters (laughs) full. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not going to sit here and do the math for the time frames. So (laughs) an approximation Oh my gosh. Well, half of the children are not here. So that's where <laughs> that's where the half comes in. <laughs> so we did talk about the fact that you have been married previously and had other relationships. And I know in those relationships you have had stepchildren or children of your partners that you have been involved with. So, um I cannot deny that. <laughs> and I know we've had conversations about, you know, um, different bonds that you've had with the different mm-hmm. stepchildren that you've had. Do you want to talk about maybe any differences between, like, my children as stepchildren and maybe other children as stepchildren you've had? Mm, I don't think making that comparison would be just the different emotions for you not like the difference of them like do you want to talk about the different emotions you've had when i guess you are no longer primary caregiver for your other stepchildren because it was a different situation yeah it's, it's a totally different scenario um As far as the removing the step parent aspect of things, mm-hmm. taking taking myself away from that role, mm-hmm. um, that that type of situation is more of a decision than it is a natural occurrence. If that makes sense. Right. Because you had a decision to end a relationship, which, which took you out of the primary caregiver role. Right. So in order to end the relationship by nature, you have to, or at least in my situation, you have to come to terms with, you'll be pulling yourself out of that. You'll no longer be one of the parents in that person's life. Right. Now, does that change how I feel or care about them? No. Right. It does not. But it takes it. It's the conscious decision to take away that ability to play a part, play that role in in a large part of their life. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, we've talked about this before and maybe just to explain it to the podcast a little bit. Um, he has four other children that he's helped raise between two different other relationships. Yes. And, um, we've talked about this when we met about how 
if any one of those children ever called him and needed help, he was always there to help. Um, and it really didn't matter what the relationship was with the, um, biological parent between him and them, that if they ever needed help, he would always be there to help them. And I fully support that because children don't make these decisions and, you know, it wasn't their fault that the relationship didn't work out. So if they needed him, I was always supportive of him being a help to them. And, um, I've even developed a relationship with Jordan's sister yeah. a little bit. Um, you know, she's called me, um, for some career advice, you know, and I helped her with that. Um, and if she ever called me, I would, I would be there for her. So I, I kind of feel like Jordan's, you know, family is an extension of my family. Um, as well so i you know i would be there for any of his you know siblings so i don't know where i was going with that (laughs) other than you know just that you know step parent role doesn't necessarily end when a relationship ends Mm, but it definitely it definitely changes um but it doesn't it doesn't take away the want to be there for for somebody right it just limits your ability to do so right yeah um so we don't plan on getting divorced so you will have you know (laughs) the rest of (laughs) our lives (laughs) and even if we run into problems i guess this will be her room (laughs) <laughs> so there was another thing i was going to ask you about i just thought about that a little while ago you know so today we went on domestic social distancing and um because i'm not feeling well as i spoke in our, our last podcast last week um and we moved me into what was colin's room so did you did you have a hard time with that today to a degree, um, I was a little upset because I really, really wanted the coldest room in the house for me. <laughs> but I told him that I needed this room because I would be breathing the virus into our room and everybody has to go into our room yeah. to take, take a shower. <laughs> so everybody would be exposed to more virus if I was in the room than if I was in a room that everybody did not have to come in. And Noah is in the room, but he is at least 12 feet away from me. I don't know. The, because I think I'm sick. So if I'm in my bedroom breathing the virus, it would fill the room. And when you walked in, you would be exposed. So. Co- coronavirus. What are you talking about? No, I said coronavirus. Um, I guess your ears didn't work. So, but, you know, hey, honey, if you had finished the bathroom already, this wouldn't be a problem. (laughs) If. I'm getting the evil eye. There's a lot of ifs here. (laughs) I could have finished the bathroom if. Okay, we won't get into that because it'll cause an argument. Really? Yeah, really? It it's my fault? It it's my wouldn't. fault, huh? You, you trying to make this my fault? I wouldn't be trying to, but it's, <gasps> it's, it would turn out that way. Wow. <laughs> wow. Tell me how you really feel. Jeez. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> it may be it may be taken that way even though it wouldn't be the intent. I know. That's I what know. I'm trying to say. What's that? I said nice to meet you, Johnny. Too bad we can't handshake. Right. <laughs> oh my gosh. So um I think we kinda covered the basis of empty empty half empty versus half full nest. And, you know, kind of what you're going through and, you know, the difference between what is going on for you versus what's going on for me, which it's just kind of surreal. 
for me. Mm -hmm. Just because you're having all of these really big emotions and I don't understand them yet because I haven't experienced them. Right. And but it's also giving me a little insight of what's to come soon. So be prepared. I don't think anybody can <laughs> be prepared for the emotions that come with your children growing up and becoming adults and stuff like that. So I, I'm getting really, really tired. So I think we need to, to end this podcast. Wrap. I can't do it as good as you. I'm not doing it right now. You're not going to be Fox for us? He does it so well. Huh? Did you Since when did I? No, I cannot <laughs> answer the championship. I am not that good. I'm not. It, this is not 1985 anymore. I am not that good. <laughs> yeah, you need a few more uh, sounds to to get you into the the championships. Wiki wiki wiki. <laughs> <laughs> Spud's like what? Yeah. All right, guys. Well, we appreciate you listening to this episode of the podcast. And we hope that you will join us for the next podcast where we'll we'll figure figure it out. out.